Good morning, interwebers, YouTubers, followers, and hopefully subscribers. Welcome to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Danielle, and this is Discover Rescue. If you like anything to do with animals or traveling or airstreams, well, this is the place for you. And you should definitely hit that little subscribe button. Right there. It's right there. The little subscribe button. And, um, you know, that little bell. Come on, the bell. Ding, ding. It's a bell. You know, we all get 50,000 notifications a day. What's one more? If you want to know a bit more about me, I will link somewhere here a video I have yet to make but it will come soon, I promise. Um, that kind of goes over who I am and what the channel is and what my mission is. But in a nutshell, I have lived in this Airstream for the last two years. And for the last 10 months or so, I have been traveling around the country, volunteering at different shelters and sanctuaries, trying to learn as much as humanly possible, but also trying to spread any and all knowledge I can about the animal rescue world and what it is to be a volunteer and how easy it is and how much fulfillment it brings you. Last week I posted a little update about how I uh, found myself here at Kindness Ranch and I will link that here. That one's done. <laughs> and since I'm about to do tons of video on kindness, I figured I would start with making a general little overview of what is Kindness Ranch and where are we and who are we and why are we? I think it is very important to put my time here into context. Kindness Ranch is an animal sanctuary on a 1,200 acre ranch in Hartville, Wyoming. We are about two hours from Casper, three hours from Denver, one and a half from Cheyenne. So although we are completely and utterly remote, um, there is plenty to do within a three hour radius here. There is national parks, there is state parks, there is cities, culture, you name it. Kindness rescues all types of animals that have been either bred or used for animal testing in labs around the country. We have a large barn, pastures, dog yurts, cats yurts, and guest yurts. And when I say yurts, it's not really tents, I promise. It's actually little houses in the shape of yurts, but they're full kitchens and full bathrooms and heated everything. Today, the barn is home to several farm animals who will get to live the rest of their lives right here on the farm. As of now, we have 12 pigs, nine horses, six cows, three calves, seven goats, three sheep, four llamas, and five bunnies. And the bunnies are actually up for adoption. And the amount of opening up they have done since I have been here really leads me to think that once they are in a forever home, they will be the cutest little monsters. And so if you really feel like adopting a bunny, well, you should come here to kindness. I work in the barn and I promise to bring you way too many shorts about way too many cute pigs. I feel like a lot of my content is going to come obviously from the barn since that is what I do most. However, Kindness is probably most well known for rescuing mainly beagles and most recently has gained notoriety for its participation in the historic rescue of 4,000 beagles from a breeding facility owned by Invigo Labs in Cumberland, Virginia. Stay tuned on more content on that. I'll probably do a few episodes just on how all that came about. We took at least six or seven trips to pick these little guys up. It feels like the first step to success. Over 3,000 miles and 24 beagles enjoying the outside for the first time. So I just want to do it again and again and, and again. again. <laughs> and again and again and again. Yeah. And once they arrive on property, they move into the dog yurts. And every dog yurt, we have two dog yurts, and each actually has somebody that lives with the beagles and kind of helps the beginning stages of training. Not easy. The yurts have an ever-ending rotations of beagles coming and going as we rescue more, more get adopted, making space for us to rescue more. We have had as many as 40 dogs on property at once to as few as 12. It is always busy and those dog caretakers are truly angels. It takes a special someone to do what they do. They live with up to 12 dogs, usually beagles, who howl at all time of the day or night. They are seriously far from the airstream, but I can hear them at 5 o'clock in the morning the second I open that door to let Cashew out. The volume is high. <laughs> to add to that, none of them are leash trained or potty trained. 
probably two of the hardest things to teach to a puppy. To make things even more challenging for them, some of these dogs are terrified and pretty shut down and completely freeze when you hold them, try to harness them, or even look at them. These kind-hearted folks spend sometimes months working on a dog, helping them come out of their shell and to be able to enjoy the smallest things such as a toy or a blanket. Insert cute footage of beagles playing with their first toys. Yes, I'm totally going to do that a lot. Others, however, come wide open. I mean, wide open and ready to see the world and live their best lives. It's like they knew this was coming and they are going to embrace it. The ranch is also home to 40-ish plus cats at all times. Those guys actually have a harder time getting adopted. And I feel really bad that I'm not going to have tons of cat footage for you. But I am a little allergic. And although I can handle one or two cats, it's a lot of cats in there. And I just walking in and my eyes and my nose and the sneezing and the itching. Um, the cat yurt is pretty amazing. It is super clean. It is spacious. They have an outdoor area that is completely fenced in and netted so that they can enjoy some safe space outside. There is always tons going on on the ranch and over the next few months I hope to bring you tons of contents on how everything works. However, if you would like to check it out for yourself, we have what we call guest yurts and they are not tents, I promise. <laughs> They're proper little homes with full kitchens, full bathroom, heated, cooled, you name it. But they are available for nightly rental and of course they are pet friendly. When staying on the property, you can get a tour of the entire place and get to meet some of the special souls that get to live here. Um, you can also volunteer and help with the early morning feeding, the afternoon playtime, or the mid-morning cleanup, or just spend some time with the dogs or cats or pigs or goats. Um, everybody has kind of issues with humans. Well, most of the dogs don't, honestly. But <laughs> some of the farm animals are still a little apprehensive of humans, so they definitely do need exposure to nice folks. We highly recommend that if you do come to Kindness, you plan your trip accordingly. As I said before, we are super remote. With a full kitchen, you can easily bring some groceries for meals while on site, as you might actually not want to leave once you get here. There are also a couple grocery stores on site, but if you're going to arrive late one night, then definitely bring some stuff for you for at least that night and that morning. How can you best help Kindness Ranch, you ask? Well, a small reoccurring monthly donation goes a very long way. When we have a consistent cash flow, we are able to help more animals and better help the ones we actually already have. Of course, you can always visit our Amazon wish list or the Chewy wish list, both of which I will link in the bio below. Um, those actually get updated pretty regularly. And let me tell you some of the stuff on there we really need. There is... Uh, there's a cart on there right now that would be for me and if you see how many goats poop in my hallway then you might really feel sorry for me and maybe get me that cart I need that cart it's a Rubbermaid it's really big and it's sturdy and the tires don't pop and it's light most importantly, you can spread the word about the cause. The Invigo Beagles have really brought animal testing in the U.S. and its practices to the forefront of our media. But with the news cycle around here rotating so regularly, uh, we mustn't let that die down at all. We actually need to keep sharing, keep reading, keep educating, and just keep trying to be decent human beings and caring about the homeless animals we have created. We need to adopt and not shop. And we need to support rescues at large. And if you want to know best ways to support animal rescue, honestly, you don't have to give money. Find your local shelter and once a week go walk a few dogs. That will change their world. I did a video about spay and neuter where I talk about how to best help shelters. And I will link it right here. Since there are so many aspects to this place, and I'm going to be here for a little while, if there is anything specific you guys would like to see, know more about, or just have questions you would like answer, please, please, please do drop a comment below. I will do my best to keep your curiosity and mine as satisfied as humanly possible. Thank you for joining me today, and I hope to see you again soon, next week, or the week after that. Yes, every other Sunday. This is so awkward, people. YouTubers make it look so easy. It's not easy. It's really easy.